Hi, I'm Ellen from the Chili Dog, and today I am working on my wallflower sweater. Knitting a project like a sweater can be complicated because generally the instructions are not specifically written out row by row. You oftentimes need to keep track of multiple shaping elements and also your progress in different stitch patterns all at the same time. So today I'm going to show you some methods to help you keep track of your progress in more complex patterns like this sweater. To begin, you need to identify important shaping and pattern elements in your design. As I'm starting my wallflower sweater, I cast on a row of stitches and the yoke of the sweater begins by working in rows. The first thing I'm going to need to keep track of is the raglan shaping that happens both here at the front and at the back of each of the sleeves. The next thing I'm going to need to keep track of is the increases that are happening and being made here at the neckline. After I get into my sweater a few rows, I'll begin working a charted stitch pattern down the center of each sleeve, so I'll need to track my progress in that. And finally, I'm going to need to track my progress in the center panel that is also a charted stitch pattern. Once you know what elements you're needing to track as you're knitting, you need to decide how you're going to track that progress. And there are a lot of different ways you can do that. You could use tick marks, making notes in your pattern. You could use a row counter. You could write corresponding rows for different charted patterns in, again, in your pattern notes, or you could use some sort of physical guide to keep your place in charts. And oftentimes when you're knitting a more complex pattern, you're going to need to use more than one of these tracking methods. And as I begin the yoke of my sweater, I actually am going to use all of these different tracking methods. So let me walk you through one by one the different methods and how they can be used to keep your place. Using tick marks can be very helpful, especially when you need to keep track of how many times you're working a specific process. I'm going to use tick marks to track how many increases I'm making for the ragline, raglan shaping and how many increases I'm making here at the neckline. To simplify things a little bit, I just made a little note so that I don't have to keep referring back to my pattern to see how my increases are going to be made. I know that overall I need to make 35 raglan increases and some are every other round and some are every fourth round. And I know that I'm going to need to make five increases on each side of the neckline. And again, some are every fourth round and some are every other round. And I just tracked here how many increases need to be made in each style. I also know that all of my increase are, all of my increases are made on right side rows. So I'm only going to put down tick marks when I have finished a row where there are increases on the wrong side rows where there's no shaping being done. I'm not going to mark anything down at all. So every time I finish a row that has raglan increases, I'm just going to put a tick mark and to kind of condense things so I can track both the raglan and neckline shaping together. Whenever I finish a row that has some sort of neckline increase, I'm just going to dot that tick mark. And there's one more thing I'm keeping track of as I'm doing my raglan increases. There are actually three different little styles of increases. There's the increases are happening at a different distance from the raglan marker here, from the sleeve marker. So there's one, two, three different distances that I need to keep track of. So I, instead of grouping my tick marks into groups of five, I am grouping them into groups of three, so I know whether I have done that first, second, or third style of raglan increase. 
One of the advantages to using tick marks like this to write down your progress is that it makes it really easy to double check your stitch counts. So in my sweater here, when I cast on, I know how many stitches were cast on at the front of the sweater. I know how many stitches were cast on here for each sleeve. And I know how many stitches there were across the back of the sweater. So I can compare that to how many increases I have made. So let's double check right now to make sure that I have enough stitches and increases made at the front of my sweater. So we'll zoom in again here. And so far, first we'll count the raglan increases. I've made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine raglan increases, and one, two, three, four, five neckline increases. So that's a total of 14 increases. And the front of my sweater, each side of the front, originally started with two stitches. So hopefully I should have 16 stitches here between the beginning of the neckline and the marker here that marks the front of the sweater. So let's just count real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen stitches before the marker. So I'm good. And again, from time to time, I'm going to check each section of the sweater to make sure that I have made the proper number of increases and that my stitch counts are right so I don't run into any problems later. Row counters can come in a number of different styles and they work well for keeping track of what row number you're on. As I'm working the yoke of my sweater, I still need to keep track of my increases at the raglan shaping and at the neckline using my tick marks. But I got to a point where now I started a stitch pattern down each sleeve of the sweater and the stitch pattern is charted. So I'm using my row counter to keep track of where I am in this chart. Every time I get done with a row of the chart, I advance the counter. Now I'm at the point in my yoke that I am continuing my raglan increases and I'll continue making tick marks to track them on my little note. I'm also working a charted pattern down the center of each sleeve and so far I've been using a row counter to track my progress with that smaller chart. And now I need to start working a larger charted pattern here at the center front of my sweater. Technically, I could use a second row counter to help me track my progress as I work this chart also. However, that would mean that I'd have a lot of things to remember to do at the end of every row. If it was a raglan increase row, I'd have to make a tick mark, and then I'd have to advance one counter for my smaller chart and a second counter for my larger chart. To simplify things, I decided that I'm just going to use a single row counter and I'm going to track my progress in this larger chart. However, I still need to know where I am in this smaller chart. So to do that, I just made a little note right up the side of my larger chart and this corresponds to what row number I should be working in this smaller chart. So for example, I know that when I'm on row 15 of the larger chart, I should also be working row three of this smaller chart. That just makes tracking a little bit easier. Even though I am primarily going to use my row counter to keep track of my progress as I'm working up this larger chart, there's another method that is actually pretty clever. You can use some sort of physical guide to keep track of your progress and it works well, especially in larger charts. My friends that do cross stitch actually have a tool for this. They have a magnetic board that you can place your pattern onto, and then you have a magnet that slides up the board as you proceed with your charted pattern. A couple low tech solutions, if you don't have that kind of tool, you could just use like a sticky note to slide up and track your progress so that you know which row you're on. 
Or my solution, since this is a larger charted pattern, I'm actually just going to use a piece of cardstock and I'm going to clip it on each side down to my pattern. And then I can advance it up as I'm working my pattern so I can see which row I'm on. This is especially helpful as I get to a point in the stitch charts where the pattern becomes just a little bit involved because not only am I able to keep track of my forward progress, I'm able to read easier across each row to see which stitches I should be working. I hope you enjoyed learning some ways to keep track of your progress in more complex knitting patterns. If you'd like to try a few of these methods in a knitting pattern, head over to the shop section of thechillydog.com and you can look for my wallflower sweater. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!